So this is a trans impedance integrator. Here we have a source uh, with a uh, uh, internal impedance and uh, sorry, a voltage source, and we are going to integrate this uh, voltage and with this integrator circuit. Um, so we can calculate the uh, ideal gain by replacing the operation amplifier with a nuller and then try to investigate how is the bandwidth definition as presented before. So the op-amp will be modeled as a single pole op-amp. So we did this before, one time constant and a DC gain, a DC or AO, A0. So for the ideal gain, we replace the controller with a nuller and then calculate the source to load response of this thing and you find this is an integrating characteristic VL over VS equals minus one over SRI CI, the integration time constant. So then we are going to select the loop gain reference such that the asymptotic gain equals the ideal gain if this is possible and in this case that is not so difficult because we do it by selecting E1, this controlled source, because if the gain of the control source becomes infinity, it does not need any voltage to produce any voltage here. And the current in this one was already zero, so both the current and the voltage are zero. So if the loop gain reference, the gain of this control source goes to infinity, then the, con the, the controller becomes a nuller, which means we have the ideal gain. So this is the correct selection. So this is the transfer of the controlled source and this is used as reference variable and then we are going to evaluate the loop gain. So we replace the controlled source with an independent source and we calculate the transfer from VC to VI and multiply this with the reference variable that we selected in the previous sheet. So there we go, the reference variable is this one and the uh, transfer from this to this is given by lambda beta kappa and it can be written as this is simple a unity gain high pass filter uh, s r i c i divided by one plus s r i c i with a minus sign because here's plus minus and here is minus plus so it's inverting multiplying both will give us the loop gain so this is the loop gain of our uh, Trans impedance integrator, and let's let's try to make some 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 plots. So uh, we do an example. We just make a thousand times DC gain and this and a pole. Uh, and here we have then the, the 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 circuit, and here we have the result. So let's study them. The ideal gain, the asymptotic gain, was e equal the ideal gain, and it's just an integrator. You see an integrator from zero up to infinity. Well, we did only plot up to one megahertz, but believe me, it goes on and on and on because with a nuller in it, there's no limitation at all. But you see the loop gain, it had a pole and a zero. Maybe I go back to the sheet of the loop gain that you, that you can uh, again see this. Here, the loop gain had two poles, one determined by the op-amp and one by the RC network and a zero, of course, there's no DC possible in the loop, so there's a zero in the origin. So a zero in the origin and two poles, and this is what is reflected in this curve. The black one is the loop gain. You see there's no DC transfer. This goes down, 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 down all the time. And then there's the first pole. Then we have, let's say, a frequency independent response because we are passing one zero and one pole. And then here is the second pole. And you see here is a region in which the loop gain exceeds unity. And the servo function, of course, there closely approaches unity. The larger the loop gain is, the better the servo function becomes unity. But here, there's no loop gain anymore. So negative feedback doesn't help us to create more bandwidth. So here you see the uh, high pass characteristic, the, the low frequency roll off. And here at the high side with this pole, the second pole in the loop gain, you see the high pass roll off. And you see the poles of the servo function are different from the poles of the loop gain. That is what we will study later. But basically you see that the integrator 
integrates from approximately, well, let's say 10 hertz, this is minus 3 dB point, to, well, let's say approximately 100 kilohertz. And there it drops. You see 1 hertz, 100 kilohertz is there. There's the feedback is working and higher frequencies, there is no loop gain anymore and lower frequencies below the one hertz, there's also no loop gain. So you see, we have decoupled the definition of the bandwidth of the feedback amplifier from its own desired frequency characteristic. And you could say the bandwidth of a frequency, uh, the bandwidth of a feedback amplifier is the bandwidth over which the gain of the feedback amplifier approximates its ideal gain within 3 dB. That's another way of saying it. Another way of saying that it is the minus 3 dB frequency range of the servo function. As you see, that is exactly the same because the servo function was modeling the difference between the asymptotic gain, the red line, and the actual gain, the blue line. So unity gain frequencies are important. Servo bandwidth is this, and we have a instruction in, uh, in SlyCap for this, find servo bandwidth and it calculates the asymptotes and the intersection points, and it will give you uh, the range, and we can use it later on for designing.